sort of full team out today. Look, we've got the master finisher down here doing the sanding on all the rafters. Okay, so by the end of this video, we'll have all the rafters fitted and in place on the roof, and the roof will be ready for overboarding with the oak tongue and groove boarding. So by the end of the last video, we got the rafters fitted on the side where the front door of this porch is. There's a crazy amount of work in fitting these rafters, which I didn't realise. But I'm just trying to do everything as properly as possible and not cut any corners, which the customer will definitely appreciate. I've counterboard, pilot hold and pre-drilled timber framing fixing screws from Timco. And also before the boarding went on, I went round with some stainless steel brad nails and put two brad nails in the top and the bottom of every single rafter. Look at that, the beauty, she's on. There we go, look at that. Beautiful roof. Not put fixings in these, I'm just gonna get uh, this run on tonight and sheet over, sort that out in the morning. So I'm gonna run out of daylight. getting dark but we are nearly there. We're still here, it's about seven o'clock, got about another half an hour. I've got my way home. There we go, look at that. Coming this morning, beautiful sunshine. Really long day yesterday getting all these rafters put in place. What a reward. It looks beautiful. So I used some DPM membrane just cut its length and then uh, spanned it across the rafters to protect them from the uh, overnight dew and any rain we might have got. Anne's been really busy sanding all these all day yesterday from about uh, 10 o'clock to late in the evening, sanding all these rafters. So kudos to Anne for getting that done. Looking good, looking well worth the effort. Really, really nice. So lots to do today. You've got to uh, pellet all these holes in this beam cut the ends on these all the way down. I've got a fix, they're screwed into the wall plate. These beam to uh, rafter fixing isn't in place, they're just sat in on top. It's only screwed at the top of the minute, so I've got to go along and uh, counter bore and pilot drill all of them. set the little device the other end of the receiver on the cut ends at my 300 and I could see every single line about 30 metres outside I could see every single line without needing the receiver
Right, so we've got a really tricky valley cut to do. We've got a different pitch here to here, and we've got different length roofs, so um, pretty interesting. It's not going to land in the corner of the uh, wall plate or the wall beam. So what I've done is just extend the rafter along on the top edge of them, put a pencil line where the top edge of these is going to come into it, uh, set up a string line, but you can also use, as I've set up, a laser. Pencil these on, draw them through with a ruler. That's my centre line. My valley board is 49 and a half mil. I can mark that on either side of that line. Put them two lines on. That is exactly level where my valley rafter is going to sit. I've set my string line just the same amount above that line as that one up there. I'm going to use that line then to set my pebbles. So effectively the string line is the straight part of the timber, the long run of the timber. So that's what your fence of your saw is going to be referencing from. So the blade of my, oh, this is Bro's bevel, I'll borrow it. The blade of his bevel will be what I pushed the saw up to as in the fence. And then the back of the bevel will effectively be my mitre cut as I look at it down on the saw. And then set up a second bevel for the, um, so along here. So this will be again along the length of the timber in line with the timber in this direction. So it sits flush with that bit there. And that is your uh, your, mark, like your bevel cut, so the tilt of your saw. It's based on that one, it's a little bit tricky to hold it all and film. That's what that one's going to be. So that is my mitre one, set that up. Then to set the bevel, also the tilt of the saw, if you, you obviously can't hold that up and hold it to the blade, it's an impossible task. So I always just set it on the bottom of the saw. You could use like a trend digital angle rule, but I always forget to bring it with me. You could set that to the bottom of the saw, read your angle off of there, then set it on the angle on the back using that one you've read off there, just to Nice little easy way of doing it. I'm just going to cut a bit of batten and check them. Still hold up, hold them in place. It looks pretty big to me. So I know that one, I can cut that side now. The saw has given me this face, so it's a square cut down in this plane, marked over on both faces, and I've just got to cut that by hand because it's like 65 degrees. angled bird's mouth here. We know this bevel because it's the same as that one there. Now I can just take a measurement from this set line here. Like a normal rafter he would take a measurement from there, that corner, on, on a tape measure down to this point here. If you're on your own like I am and you can't hold a tape up there, you're just going to have to find a long enough, straight well, a long enough piece of wood that you can nip onto that mark and put yourself a pencil mark on that point there. Like the margin of the bird's mouth from the top of the timber can be measured also off of these rafters so it's exactly the same uh, from that top edge to that bird's mouth. And I can use them two bevels that I've got set for the mitre saw to mark out that.
Oh my god, it's beautiful. That's how you walk. Really not a bad first attempt, is it? <laughs> I'll fix it in place tomorrow. Um, but before I do that, I've got to sand it all and then uh, use the saw to take out a couple of bevels so that the boarding will sit flat and it'll sit right on the edge nice and neatly rather than uh, sit down to the centre. But a nice way to end the day that. Little beauty. Just clamped a bit of wood on above the blade there so that I can work from this face against the fence to uh, give me a little bit of a scallop cut so that the boarding when it runs in sits nice and close to the edge so that effectively give a board finish so it finishes nice and tight so it doesn't sit on the bed at the middle of the wood like that, give me a big gap for the boarding that will run on the underside of this roof so it's got to rip that sort of notch out the end of that panel So, in theory, I wouldn't put that up there. Tap it down. This corner here will be where the boards run into. Nice tight edge. Again, this one. Nice tight edge for the boards to run in on. Yeah, beauty. Now that she's in place, I can cut, uh, I think they're called jack rafters, isn't they? Off of that valley rafter. So I've just got an off cut, one of the ones I cut off the end of the uh, common rafters, the off cuts, one of the long ones. Um, so it's got the right cut on the top. I just um, yeah, got that chopped in until it sits right in there. I can't really do it one handed. So look at that cut looking nice. And then just measuring from uh, where that raft is going here. Um, marked off that last one, that one's dead square. I've set that up so it is perfectly square. Just put my two marks on where that's going and I'll measure to that point from that one. And that'll, be, and that'll be that point on the rafter. So I can uh, mark that and just hold my saw to that point. So we're going to set that about the right margin. It's showing a bit on the shoulder. It wants to come round, which it's showing here as well and here. So it just wants a couple more mil off. The angles look about right. I'll nip a couple of mil off that. And then the amount it sits up here, it's got to cut off flat on here, which technically should be the same bird's mouth as just there. This goose. Still a screw it up, but yeah, looking pretty, pretty spot on. Why is this from the clamp? So yeah, just the same thing now for the rest of these. I'm not going to film it because I'm under a bit of time pressure, but uh, just take that measurement. All the tops are cut, and the tenons, so you just got to cut the bottom off, check them, 
and get screwed in. So we're going to stop for a cup of tea, but uh, get in there. One more little one to do. Once you've found the angle of this cut, the length measurement, once you've done two, it's just the same all the way up the roof, as long as these are spaced apart the same. Um, it was 360 mil from that one to that one on the same piece, so just knock 360 mil off the uh, measurement you cut it to every time. You should end up with all your, all your cuts at that, um, valley or after being exactly the same width apart. Because this is such an open roof and you're going to see that like as you walk down this sidewalk here, I've spent a lot of time making sure that these cuts are really nice and plumb so that it just looks right as you're walking down. This detail here is pretty cool that that step to the uh, ridge beam there to the valley rafter to the jack rafter, them little increments are all very similar. It just looks like a very pleasing. Last little look on the top before I cover it over. Pretty pleased with them cuts. Looking pretty nice. There we go, she's done. And it's raining, but uh, just got finished in time before everything got wet. Beautiful job.